Hello everyone, here we are. We're gonna get going with uh, 2 Kings chapter 12, okay? So let's get going. Uh, in the seventh year of Jehu, Joash became king and he reigned in Jerusalem 40 years. His mother's name was Zibiah. She was from Beersheba. Joash did what was right in the eyes of the Lord all the years Jehoiada the priest instructed him. The high places, however, were not removed. The people continued to offer sacrifices and burn incense there. Joash said to the priests, collect all the money that's brought as sacred offerings to the temple of the Lord. The money collected in the census, the money received from personal vows, and the money brought voluntarily to the temple. <clears throat> Uh, let every priest receive the money from one of the treasurers, then use it to repair whatever damage is found in the temple. So he's conscribing or instructing the priests to take some money from the donations to the temple from the people and from wherever else they come from so that they can fix any damage that has happened to the temple, okay? But by the 23rd year of King Joash, the priests still had not repaired the temple. Therefore, King Joash summoned Jehoiada the priest and the other priests and asked them, why aren't you repairing the damage done to the temple? Take no more money from your treasurers, but hand it over for repairing the temple. The priests agreed that they would not collect any more money from the people and that they would not repair the temple themselves. Jehoiada the priest took a chest and bored a hole in its lid. He placed it beside the altar on the right side as one enters the temple of the Lord. Whenever they saw that there was a large amount of money in the chest, the royal secretary and the high priest came, counted the money that had been brought into the temple of the Lord and put it into bags. When the amount had been determined, they gave the money to the men appointed to supervise the work on the temple. With it... They paid those who worked on the temple of the Lord, the carpenters and the builders, the masons and stone cutters. They purchased timber and blocks of dressed stone for the repair of the temple of the Lord and met all the other expenses of restoring the temple. The money brought into the temple was not spent for making silver basins, wick trimmers, sprinkling bowls, trumpets, or any other articles of gold or silver for the temple of the Lord. It was paid to the workers who used it to repair the temple. They did not require an accounting from those to whom they gave the money to pay the workers because they acted with complete honesty. The money from the guilt offerings and sin offerings was not brought into the temple of the Lord. It belonged to the priests. About this time, Hazael, king of Aram, went up and attacked Gath and captured it. Now we know Gath is a Philistine town. Then he turned to attack Jerusalem, but Joash, king of Judah, took all the sacred objects dedicated by his predecessors, Jehoshaphat, Jehoram, and Ahaziah, the kings of Judah, and the gifts he himself had dedicated, and all the gold found in the treasuries of the temple of the Lord and of the royal palace, and he sent them to Hazael, king of Aram, who then withdrew from Jerusalem. As for the other events of the reign of Joash and all he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah? His officials conspired against him and assassinated him at Beth Millo on the road down to Silla, S-I-L-L-A. The officials who murdered him were Josabad, son of Shemaeth, and Jehozabad, son of Shomer. He died and was buried with his ancestors in the city of David, and Amaziah, his son, succeeded him as king. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, excuse me, I just need to catch up here. All right. Sometimes I'm reading and something isn't sinking in, so I seek to catch up and understand what I'm reading. Okay. Second Kings chapter 13. In the 23rd year of Joash, son of Ahaziah, king of Judah, Jehoahaz, king, son of Jehu, became king of Israel. So we're looking at Judah and we're looking at Israel, okay? 
So in the 23rd year of Joash, the son of Ahaziah of Judah, Jehoahaz, son of Jehu, became king of Israel in Samaria, and he reigned 17 years. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord by following the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, which he'd caused Israel to commit, and he didn't turn away from them. So the Lord's anger burned against Israel, and for a long time he kept them under the power of Hazael, king of Aram, and Ben-Hadad, his son. Then Jehoahaz sought the Lord's favor, and the Lord listened to him, for he saw how severely the king of Aram was oppressing Israel. The Lord provided a deliverer for Israel, and they escaped from the power of Aram. So the Israelites lived in their own homes as they had before, but they didn't turn away from the sins of the house of Jeroboam, which he'd caused Israel to commit. They continued in them. Also, the Asherah pole remained standing in Samaria. Now, we remember that Asherah poles are fertility poles, okay? And they're very pagan, and they're, they go right along with Molech and Baal and all of those false gods. Nothing had been left of the army of Jehoahaz except 50 horsemen, 10 chariots, and 10,000 foot soldiers, for the king of Aram had destroyed the rest and made them like the dust at threshing time. As for the other events of the reign of Jehoahaz, all he did and his achievements, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Israel? Jehoahaz rested with his ancestors and was buried in Samaria. And Jehoahaz, his son, uh, Jehoash, excuse me, so it's Jehoahaz, his son, Je Jehoash, Jehoash, his son succeeded him as king. In the 37th year, of, jo of Joash, king of Judah. Now we're looking at Judah, okay? Um, Jehoash, son of Jehoahaz, became king of Israel and Samaria, and he reigned 16 years. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord and didn't turn away from any of the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, which he had caused Israel to commit. He continued in them. As for the other events of the reign of Jehoash, all he did in his achievements, including his war against Amaziah, king of Judah, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Israel? Jehoash rested with his ancestors, and Jeroboam succeeded him on the throne. Jehoash was buried in Samaria with the kings of Israel. Now, Elisha had been suffering from the illness from which he died. Jehoash, king of Israel, went down to see him and wept over him. My father, my father, he cried, the chariots and horsemen of Israel. Elisha said, get a bow and some arrows, and he did so. Take the bow in your hands, he said to the king of Israel. When he'd taken it, Elisha put his hands on the king's hands. Open the east window, he said, and he opened it. Shoot, Elisha said, and he shot. The Lord's arrow of victory, the arrow of victory over Aram, Elisha declared. You will completely destroy the Aramans at Aphek. Then he said, take the arrows, and the king took them. Elisha told him, strike the ground. He struck it three times and stopped. The man of God was angry with him and said, you should have struck the ground five or six times. Then you would have defeated Aram and completely destroyed it. But now you will defeat it only three times. Elisha died and was buried. Now, Moabite raiders used to enter the country every spring. Once while some Israelites were burying a man, suddenly they saw a band of raiders, so they threw the man's body into Elisha's tomb. They were panicking. When the body touched Elisha's bones, the man came to life and stood up on his feet. Hazael, king of Aram, oppressed Israel throughout the reign of Jehoahaz, but the Lord was gracious to them and had compassion and showed concern for them because of his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. To this day, he's been unwilling to destroy them or banish them from his presence. Hazael, king of Aram, died, and Ben-Hadad, his son, succeeded him as king. Now, we're, these are not the original Ben-Hadad's or the original Jeroboam. These are new people with the same name. Then Jehoash, uh, son of Jehoahaz, recaptured from Ben-Hadad, son of Hazael, the towns he'd taken in battle from his father Jehoahaz. Three times Jehoash defeated him, and so he recovered the Israelite towns. 
Okay, 2 Kings 14. In the second year of Jehoash, son of Jehoahaz, king of Israel, Amaziah, son of Joash, king of Judah, began to reign. He was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 29 years. His mother's name was Jehoadan, and she was from Jerusalem. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, but not as his father David had done. In everything, he followed the example of his father Joash. Joash. The high places, however, were not removed. The people continued to offer sacrifices and burn incense there. After the kingdom was firmly in his grasp, he executed the officials who'd murdered his father, the king. Yet he didn't put the children of the assassins to death in accordance with what is written in the book of the law of Moses, where the Lord commanded, parents are not to be put to death for their children nor children put to death for their parents. Each will die for their own sin. He was the one who defeated 10,000 Edomites in the Valley of Salt and captured Selah in battle, calling it Joktiel, the name it has to this day. Then Amaziah sent messengers to Jehoash, son of Jehoahaz, the son of Jehu, the king of Israel, with the challenge, come, let us face each other in battle. But Jehoash, king of Israel, replied to Amaziah, king of Judah, a thistle in Lebanon sent a message to a cedar in Lebanon, Give your daughter to my son in marriage. Then a wild beast in Lebanon came along and trampled the thistle underfoot. You have indeed defeated Edom, and now you're arrogant. Glory in your victory, but stay at home. Why ask for trouble and cause your own downfall and that of Judah also? Amaziah, however, would not listen, so Jehoash, king of Israel, attacked. He and Amaziah, king of Judah, faced each other at Beth Shemesh in Judah. Judah was routed by Israel, and every man fled to his home. So he picked a fight he couldn't finish, huh? Jehoash, king of Israel, captured Amaziah, king of Judah, the son of Joash, the son of Ahaziah, at Beth Shemesh. Then Jehoash went to Jerusalem and broke down the wall of Jerusalem from the Ephraim gate to the Comer gate, a section about 400 cubits long. He took all the gold and silver and all the articles found in the temple of the Lord and in the treasuries of the royal palace. He also took hostages and returned to Samaria. As for the other events of the reign of Jehoash, that what he did and his achievements, including his war against Amaziah, king of Judah, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Israel? Jehoash rested with his ancestors and was buried in Samaria with the kings of Israel, and Jeroboam his son succeeded him as king. Amaziah, son of Joash, king of Judah, lived for 15 years after the death of Jehoash, son of Jehoahaz, king of Israel. As for the other events of Amaziah's reign, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah? They conspired against him in Jerusalem, and he fled to Lachish, but they sent men after him to Lachish and killed him there. He was brought back by horse and was buried in Jerusalem with his ancestors in the city of David. Then all the people of Judah took Azariah, who was 16 years old, and made him king in place of his father Amaziah. He was the one who rebuilt Elath and restored it to Judah after Amaziah rested with his ancestors. In the 15th year of Amaziah, son of Joash, king of Judah, Jeroboam, son of Joash, king of Israel, became king in Samaria, and he reigned 41 years. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord and didn't turn away from any of the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, that's to distinguish which Jeroboam it is, which, he had, which was the original, which he had caused Israel to commit. He was the one who restored the boundaries of Israel from Lebo Hamath to the Dead Sea in accordance with the word of the Lord, the God of Israel, spoken through his servant Jonah, son of Amittai, the prophet from Gath Hefer. The Lord had seen how bitterly everyone in Israel, whether slave or free, was suffering. There was no one to help them. And since the Lord had not said he would blot out the name of Israel from under heaven, he saved them by the hand of Jeroboam, son of Jehoash. As for the other events of Jeroboam's reign, all he did in his military achievements, including how he recovered for Israel, both Damascus and Syria, uh, which, uh, excuse me, Damascus and Hamath, which had belonged to Judah, 
Are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Israel? Jeroboam rested with his ancestors, the kings of Israel, and Zechariah, his son, succeeded him as king. So I'm going to read this again. Um, as for the other events of Jeroboam's reign, all he did in his military achievements, including how he recovered for Israel both Damascus and Hamath. I don't know where I got Syria from. <coughs> excuse me, tons of pollen in the air, which had belonged to Judah. Are they not written in the books of the kings of Israel? Okay, last chapter for the night, 2 Kings 15. In the 27th year of Jeroboam, the king, uh, king of Israel, Azariah, Azariah, son of Amaziah, king of Judah, began to reign. He was 16 years old, so we heard about this in the last chapter. When he became king and he reigned in Jerusalem 52 years, his mother's name was Jecoliah. She was from Jerusalem or Jecolia. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, just as his father Amaziah had done. The high places, however, were not removed. The people continued to offer sacrifices and burn incense there. The Lord afflicted the king with leprosy until the day he died and he lived in a separate house. Jotham, the king's son, had charge of the palace and governed the people of the land. As for the other events of Azariah's reign and all he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah? Azariah rested with his ancestors and was buried near them in the city of David, and Jotham, his son, succeeded him as king. In the 38th year of Azariah, king of Judah, Zechariah, son of Jeroboam, became king of Israel in Samaria, and he reigned six months. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord as his predecessors had done. He did not turn away from the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, which he'd caused Israel to commit. Shalom, son of Jabesh, conspired against Zechariah. He attacked him in front of the people, assassinated him, and succeeded him as king. The other events of Zechariah's reign are written in the book of the annals of the kings of Israel. So the word of the Lord spoken to Jehu was fulfilled. Your descendants will sit on the throne of Israel to the fourth generation. Shalem, son of Jabesh, became king in the 39th year of Uzziah, king of Judah, and he reigned in Samaria one month. So uh, Shalem, son of Jabesh, is now a king of Israel for one month. Then Menahem, son of Gadi, went from Tirzah up to Samarah. Samaria. He attacked Shalom, son of Jabesh, in Samaria, assassinated him, and succeeded him as king. The other events of Shalom's reign and the conspiracy he led are written in the book of the annals of the kings of Israel. At that time, Menahem started out from Tirzah, attacked Tifzah and everyone in the city and its vicinity because they refused to open their gates. He sacked Tifzah and ripped open all the pregnant women. We heard that prophesied, right? Awful. Just completely awful. In actually that was for that was a prophecy for Hazael. So, okay. In the th that's war. You know, we've seen it in our own lifetimes, uh pregnant women being ripped apart. In the 39th year of Azariah, king of Judah, Menahem son of Gadi became king became king of Israel and he reigned in Samaria 10 years. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, despite during his entire reign, he didn't turn away from the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, which he had caused Israel to commit. Then Pul, P-U-L, king of Assyria invaded the land, and Menahem gave him a thousand talents of silver to gain his support and strengthen his own hold on the kingdom. Menahem exacted this money from Israel. Every wealthy person had to contribute 50 shekels of silver to be given to the king of Assyria. So the king of Assyria withdrew and stayed in the land no longer. So he just came to basically rob them of money, threaten them until they paid up. Um, as for the other events in Menahem's reign and all he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Israel? Menahem rested with his ancestors and Pekahiah, his son, succeeded him as king. So you see, we're swinging back and forth between Israel and Judah. Israel and Judah. We're looking at the kings of each of these. In the 50th year of Azariah, so we're backtracking a little bit here, king of Judah, Pekahiah, son of Menahem, became king of Israel in Samaria, and he reigned two years. 
Pekahiah did evil in the eyes of the Lord. He didn't turn away from the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, which he'd caused Israel to commit. One of his chief officers, Pekah, son of Ramaliah, conspired against him. Taking 50 men of Gilead with him, he assassinated Pekahiah, along with Argob and Aria, in the citadel of the royal palace at Samaria. So Pekah killed Pekahiah and succeeded him as king. The other events of Pekahiah's reign and all he did are written in the book of the annals of the kings of Israel. In the 52nd year of Azariah, king of Judah, Pekah, son of Ramaliah, became king of Israel in Samaria, and he reigned 20 years. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord. He didn't turn away from the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, which he'd caused Israel to commit. In the time of Pekah, king of Israel, Tiglath-Pileser, king of Assyria, came and took Ijon, abel beth Maka, Genoa, Kadesh, and Hazor. He took Gilead and Galilee, including all the lands of Naphtali, and deported the people to Assyria. Then Hoshea, son of Elah, conspired against Pekah, son of Ramalia. He attacked and assassinated him and then succeeded him as king in the 20th year of Jotham, son of Uzziah. As for the other events of Pekah's reign, and all he did are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Israel. In the second year of Pekah, son of Ramalia, king of Israel, Jotham, son of Uzziah, king of Judah, began to reign. So this is swinging back and forth between Israel and Judah. He was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 16 years. His mother's name was Jerusha, daughter of Zadok. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, just as his father Uzziah had done. The high places, however, were not removed. The people continued to offer sacrifices and burn incense there. Jotham rebuilt the upper gate of the temple of the Lord. Uh, as for the other events of Jotham's reign and what he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah? In those days, the Lord began to send Rezin, R-E-Z-I-N, king of Aram and Pekah, son of Ramalia, against Judah. Jotham rested with his ancestors and was buried with them in the city of David, the city of his father. And Ahaz, his son, succeeded him as king. All right, so tomorrow we will go to 2 Kings chapter 16. In the meantime, keep that conversation going with your Lord, okay? With your father, with your friend, with your protector, with your savior, with the one who secures, secures you, um from the death in this world, from death in your spirit, okay? And takes you safely to heaven. I love you very much. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night.